Whether you're climbing on an indoor wall or an outdoor crag, there are several pieces of gear that all climbers use. And today, I'm gonna to be looking at three of the most important items. Your harness, your rock shoes, and your head protection. The first piece of kit I put on is a climbing helmet. Climbing outdoors with a helmet makes a lot of sense. Most lightweight helmets combine a shell with a comfortable foam lining to protect the head. Take a moment to adjust the helmet to create the perfect fit. This will prevent the helmet tipping forwards or slipping backwards, which exposes the top of the neck or the forehead. I put mine on at the bottom of the crag in case someone accidentally drops something on me or a stone becomes dislodged. And I leave it on whilst belaying. Now that your brain's protected, it's time to think about your feet. Sooner rather than later, you're going to want to get hold of a pair of rock climbing shoes. Now these have smooth soles, but they're not just smooth, they're sticky, which allows me to smear the soles on the rock to improve my grip. Although thin soles provide a greater degree of sensitivity, a thicker sole will last longer. Bear in mind that indoor walls can be especially tough on footwear. Cotswold has strong links with many climbing walls around the UK. One of the Manchester stores is located inside a fantastic rock climbing facility, which features a massive 20 metre wall. The sole is just one feature that enables a climbing shoe to provide superb contact with and a great feel for the surface beneath your feet. Many experienced climbers who regularly climb on different types of rock, like steep limestone routes, tall granite cliffs and technical sandstone boulders, own two or even three different types of shoes that between them have different features such as a camber which pushes toes into the front of the shoe for maximum sensitivity, a pointed toe box which works wonders on small pockets and a stiff midsole for greater support. As a rule of thumb, a shoe that is stiff across the foot is better suited to edging than smearing. To deliver this high level of performance, climbing shoes need to fit your feet much more closely than any other shoes you own. Very tight fitting shoes, like the pair that Myron is wearing, are designed to be worn on short sport routes and boulders. Those Velcro strips allow Myron to whip them off in between climbs to soothe his cramped feet. For the rest of us, a snug fitting shoe, which isn't painful to wear and which edges and smears, will do just fine. By the time you've worn out your first pair of shoes, you'll have done enough routes to know what extra features you really need. Just remember, if the shoes are painful to wear in the shop, they're gonna be agony here on the crag. To get the maximum performance from my sticky soles, I use a bar towel to ensure they're clean and dry just before I start to climb. Now we need a harness to attach ourselves to the rope. Harnesses sold by Cotswold meet mandatory safety standards and it's vital to read the manufacturer's instructions on how to wear the harness and how to do it up. Traditional designs, like the harness Myron is wearing, require you to double back the webbing straps through the buckles. Whereas modern harnesses like this one just need to be pulled tight. This harness also has adjustable leg loops, which allows me to wear thicker trousers if I'm climbing in cooler weather. Adjustable leg loops also allow a harness to be used for mountaineering. In warm weather like this, I wear trousers that have a soft waistband that sits comfortably under my harness. They also have articulated knees. The last thing you want to wear is clothing that restricts your movement when you're on the crux or reaching for a foothold. You'll want a snug fitting padded harness that feels comfortable because hopefully you're going to be wearing it all day long. Now whilst most adult climbers wear a sit harness like mine, children need to wear full body harnesses. Harnesses for female climbers have more distance between the waist belt and the leg loops, and they have different diameter belts and loops too. Used in moderation, chalk helps keep fingers dry. If I'm climbing routes with large holds, then I don't bother with chalk. But if you're climbing harder routes, a small piece of powdered chalk works well. Many indoor walls insist that climbers use chalk balls to help reduce the amount of chalk dust in the air. You can do your bit by keeping the drawstring on your chalk bag drawn tight whenever possible, especially when you reach the top of a windy crag. Of course, there's much more to climbing than a helmet, a harness and rock shoes. But getting these pieces of kit right will take you one step closer towards climbing safely. 
As well as stocking a wide range of climbing gear for adults and children, Cotswold stores are ideal places to find out about your local climbing walls, clubs and courses. It's essential that harnesses, helmets and shoes fit properly. Cotswold offers this service free of charge in every store.